Welcome to the all new Sports Visions. I'm DJ Jones alongside my good friend and traveling partner, Dale Williams. How are you, sir? What's up, player? Man, I'm excited. I feel like a kid in a candy store. So much to choose from out there. Of course, the World Series going on right now. Local high school uh, football is in full effect and getting ready to head towards the playoffs. College football, it is what it is. The SEC report and all that coming up in just a little bit. And my heart still is broken about the World Series, but we got a whole lot of sports. All right, all that and more coming up next on Sports Visions. Ever tell everyone about the great new brands we have in? Do you mean the No Love or the Four Pockets Full, the Rich Forever, or the Inn? All of those brands would be here and more. We have a large selection of LRG and a coup. Black Pyramid, the Latigre, the Hustle Gang. And as always, we carry a large selection of new era caps. So come see us at the Clothes Connection located at 3360 Buena Vista Road or call 706-984-8575. Bus is coming in 10 minutes. Come eat breakfast. Hey, watch the homework. Do you know it's supposed to rain? Where's my gray hat? Where did you leave it? It's your body. What time does practice end today? I like that headband. It really makes a statement. Are you going to wear this to work? Let's go. Bus is here. Liberty Utilities Natural Gas. So reliable, you'll forget we're there. Imagine a life-changing injury. Imagine the fear and unknown. The Houston Clinic Sports Medicine Team, the only physicians in the area with advanced certification in orthopedic sports medicine, treat sports injuries with innovative techniques. The Houston Clinic has helped nearly a million athletes live without pain. Imagine getting back in the game. Imagine the best game of your life. The Houston Clinic Sports Medicine Team. Welcome back to Sports Visions. Dale High School football obviously is uh, in full force right now. Only a few more weeks left in the season and teams are starting to obviously head in the direction that we all knew that they would end up in. I know that because of the offseason or the lack of offseason with the coronavirus, COVID uh, uh, crisis, you know, teams weren't really able to get together and really do the things in the offseason before the season to prepare. But, you know, here we are now four, five, six games into the season. Teams are starting to look a, look a lot like what they're supposed to. They're looking a lot like DJ and really is still competitive with all the high school teams in um, their center effect in the Alabama side and the Georgia side. But really, I think it's really getting clear we're just being able to see a whole lot clearer what team's gonna make the playoffs. Before we get into the heavy lifting, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank a couple of guys mm -hmm. that, uh, I mean, obviously they make our show, this show as well as our radio show, possible because uh, you know they, the, in, the research and the, and the information that they uh, provide for our Sports Visions Nation, and that's uh, Rex Castillo and, uh, of course, Jack Patterson over at WRBL. Those sports guys, man, they come on our radio show on Mondays and Thursdays. Of course, on Mondays, Jack, he comes on to recap the weekend, and Rex will come on to preview the upcoming high school football schedule. I mean, man, they're doing a great job, DJ, and we appreciate them. They're great business partners, man. I think really just for setting the table for high school football, they do a great job on the prep zone. They cover a lot of ground. And, of course, also coming up in just a few weeks, the 13th annual Sports Visions High School Football Players Awards, of course, High School Football Awards, rather. And, uh, Dale, this is something that we're really proud of. And, again, it's kind of grown into itself now. 13 years, man. Now, again, we started this thing, man, ago, uh, uh, mm -hmm. years ago. And I tell you, man, it's special. And uh, I know that because of, the obviously, the crisis and, and of the pandemic and whatnot, that we haven't been able to move in, as we have moved in past. But you know what? It's even, even greater. More people are able to see it because of the virtual uh, opportunities that we have to do it on this great show. That's right, man. And really, it's going to be great, man. Again, just like even in the midst of the pandemic, DJ, like what we did for the Female Athlete of the Year award show, we're going to do that for the High School Football Award show. And I think really one of the things that we want to continue to do, we're going to continue to promote these young men and women in this community. Looking forward to doing it. And then thank God for the virtual piece. And thank God for CTV being for being a partner of this great event. And there's some awesome opportunities for you to uh, be a part of it if you want to help us sponsor this uh, the, the award show. Then, of course, awarding over 60 or recognizing over 
60 of the top high school football players here in East Alabama, West Central Georgia. And again, the way we're able to do it with the television show and, of course, the, all of our CTV viewers as well as uh, CTV Beam viewers as well as the uh, YouTube TV, man, the exposure and the recognition, man. We're still getting uh, calls and compliments <laughs> and, and, uh, and uh, you know, people talking about the, the uh, Female right. Athlete of the Year awards. And that was back in April. That's right, man. And really, again, you know, we're able to do it virtually. And I think really for us, when you have the opportunity to have players from two states, nine counties in this Chattahoochee Valley area, you want to continue to award these young men. And really, we have some of the top players in the whole country right in this region. And we'll continue to promote and doing those things to, to award these young men. Speaking of uh, some of the top teams, of course, big shout out to, of course, the Central Red Devils, Dale, they were able to uh, come together and they uh, put it on. They, they took Dothan out around the back of the barn and put it on and beat him 49 to nothing, man. And that, that was a great for Coach Nix and his ball club because, again, obviously they've been up and down. However, you know what? The Central football, uh, football team is, I think they're coming together as we approach the playoffs. I think really like the key word, DJ, they're coming together. I think they had to work out some kinks. They had to develop a little bit more. Again, when you don't have off-season training, you got to, it takes some time to start clicking again. I think Central is clicking at the right time. Even though they won't win the region this year, they have an opportunity to make it to the playoffs. Just like all the other teams, if you're going to lose, you lose early, but then you got to get better as the season go on. And I think Central has gotten better as the season has gone on. Congratulations to Coach Torrey up at uh, Lynette, man, for the, uh, boy, I don't know how many times they've won it, but just the <laughs> win in the region, of course, getting That's ready right. as, uh, of course, won the, what, uh, two of the last three state championships. That's right. But uh, again, right back where they needed to be. They started also a little rocky, losing to Valley early on, but uh, have, they have righted the ship and uh, right back where they always are. They're right there in the spot. DJ Clifford Story does a great job with Lynette. Uh, and every year, man, they, they're right there. Right there going to win the region or they're going to win a state championship. Even though they lost to Valley early this year, DJ, their plan is still to run, make a state championship run. Jason Gibson over at Glenwood, he's putting together something special, folks. I tell you, you know, we, we've been talking week after week about how good this team has been playing, but I think Jason has established uh, a culture, if you will, and we use that word and we don't That's use right. it lightly, but established a culture that uh, this is a school that uh, obviously uh, means, uh, you know, well, and they're serious about their football program. Uh, Jason and his staff puts in a lot of work. These kids have bought in and they're starting to perform uh, again week in and week out. And uh, that's why they're one of the top teams in, the, in the Alabama right now. DJ, you said a mouthful when you said Jason Gibson has done a great job changing the culture and the environment over at Glenwood. The players are bigger, faster, stronger. They have a great uh, camaraderie among one another. They got a great booster club. Great environment to play football, and I think really Glenwood has definitely well improved their program, and they're going to get better, DJ. Auburn and Opelika as well. Uh, Auburn is doing, doing done quite well, and we had a chance to see them a couple of weeks ago when they came down uh, to Garrett Harrison Stadium to play Central. Um, but again, uh, again, well, in, and of course, uh, in the region lead from what I understand, and again, looking forward to seeing how this whole thing plays out. It's going to play out pretty good, DJ. Auburn's already won their region. Opelika has won their region. And really, like I said, these teams are getting better and better. They're playoff bound. Maybe they can just, you know, rest some of their players, but really they continue to develop young talent, good talent. They're going to be great. Uh, it's going to be great to watch these teams, DJ, go into the playoffs. Let's take it on the other side of the Kool-Aid, if you will. I know when we talk about Pacelli, and we hadn't mentioned Pacelli in a long time, but I'm really impressed with what Dwight Jones is doing over there. And again, they're one of the top teams in the state on the private school side of things. But uh, Dwight Jones has done well. Pierce Summers is one of the great running backs this year in the state. And uh, you know what? They, uh, they're they coming into something special. You know, Dwight does a great job. Wherever he goes, he's going to change that climate he's going to change the environment of his football team he's going to have a running team they're going to run downhill they're going to be physical on defense and that's one of the biggest things that i can see in the change of pacelli dwight does a great job wherever he ends up now again north side is the only team over there in columbus in muskogee county that is playing up in 5a and coach oropesa the first year coach who is a disciple <laughs> of uh, coach dwight jones it's uh, it's great to see him uh, already you know in, in the first year the players are bought into it and they beat some people they weren't supposed to beat Dale. and again uh, they're off to a great first season they, they are dj i know coach oropesa i mean really for us Northside making the playoffs, that's going to be big in itself. And I think really as you watch or, uh, watch 
Northside early on this year, DJ. You saw the development of these players. They do a great job running RPOs for the offensive side of the ball. They have a sticky, stingy defense. They're doing real good things. And you can tell, like I said, the Dwight Jones, uh, that piece right there on Coach Oropesa, it is definitely working great for Northside this year. This name that I'm about to say, Coach Woolrich Hardaway. You know what? That's a name that you're going to be hearing a lot about here over the last next few years. If, in fact, somebody didn't come in here and pluck him out of the Muskogee County High <laughs> School football see, uh, 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 football <laughs> program. You know, the thing about what he has been able to do, he's a young coach. He's full of life. He works out with his players. He goes in the weight room. You don't see that, Dale. That's, That's very right. unusual. However, you know, what a way to motivate his kids and to turn that program around. And Hardaway is, uh, they're playing uh, some special football as well. This man, they're playing special football, DJ. And really, I think really Hardaway is going to be probably be the team that's going to contend with Carver for the region. And I think really, like you said, DJ, Mike Woods is his reason. I mean, really changing the culture, changing the environment. He's done that at Hardaway. He has a very young team. Most of these guys are sophomores and juniors, but they really are, they got playmakers all over the field. It's going to be interesting to see if they can stay into that playoff picture and really, I think, really contend a little bit with Carver. Now, when you mentioned Carver, Carver had an opportunity to go up to LaGrange last week and obviously got a scare in the first half. However, it's you know some we've seen Carver play on a, on a couple of occasions, right. and for whatever reason. Uh, Carver plays down to their talent. However, when they get it crunk up, <laughs> you know, it's always special. They uh, remind me somewhat of the Georgia Bulldogs, if you will. <laughs> they come out uh, in the first half, of course, uh, you know, kind of lackluster. I mean, they, they turn it around. But, uh, you know, a lot has to be said for the staff uh, of Corey Joyner and the Carver Tigers, man. They have, uh, you know, the, the, po the point differential this season, man, has been, uh, again, almost 40 points that they played out of the five games. They've scored at least 40, 50 points. And, of course, they've spotted, uh, have spotted their opponents by several touchdowns. I mean, really, you know, you can tell uh, Corey Joyner does a great job with Carver ever since he's been there. You know, he has a great coaching staff, DJ. They make a lot of adjustments, even though everybody is always up to play Carver. When Corey and the Carver Tigers make adjustments, man, they really turn it on a little bit, you know, raising points. They're, they have no problem scoring points. They have no problem with DJ Riles scoring with explosive plays. They're going to make some big plays, and they're going to get after you on defense. So you got Carver that's in their region, and really they're going to be the team to beat. Last but not least, we got to congratulate uh, Coach uh, Pierre Coffey down with the Chetco team that they have, and That's of course, right. what he's been able to do. We know that he has been successful every uh, in all his state, everywhere he's been. Uh, he's been successful in the Chattahoochee Valley, and uh, he's taken that again winning culture and that winning attitude down to uh, Chetco. And again, the, the, to see how those kids in that community responds to, to responds to him uh, is just uh, spectacular. It's, it's great, man. Really, in that principal piece, DJ. You know, he's a former principal and he's a head coach. He's done a great job. Again, we're using that term again. The culture and the environment, he has changed. But wherever you go, if you're going to be successful, you're going to have to change your environment and the culture. All right, we'll take a short break. Don't go anywhere. This is Sports Visions. Greetings, this is Reverend Thomas H. Mills, Jr., pastor of Spirit, Truth, and Liberty Ministries, Inc., located at 3574 Macon Road, Columbus, Georgia. I want to invite you to join us in our weekly worship services on Sunday mornings, our worship service is held at 11 a.m. on Facebook at Spirit Truth and Liberty Ministries Inc. STLMI. On Tuesday evenings, our women's Bible study is held at 7 p.m., led by Associate Minister Terry Myers via Zoom. On Thursdays, our general Bible study is held at 7 p.m., also via Zoom. On Fridays, a word of encouragement is given at 6.30 p.m. on Facebook at Spirit, Truth, and Liberty Ministries, Inc. STLMI. We look forward to you joining us. And until then, may the blessings of God be with you. It started with a few smaller bills. $50 here. $80. $100. I had good health insurance. Why isn't this covered? Well, then they started getting bigger. $800. $1,800. I saved for this. But not that much. I'm glad I had Aflac. They gave me money when I needed it most. That's why Aflac is here, to help with the expenses health insurance doesn't cover. I love that Aflac duck. Aflac. Get to know us at Aflac.com. In Japan, they have something called Kobe beef. That's how we do it at Luke's Pub. Oh, 
that's how we do it at Luke's Pub. That's how we do it at Luke's Pub. That's how we do it at Luke's Pub. Y'all come out and see us. Headquarter Nissan has the same used cars as our competitors for much less. And with a lifetime warranty. Their 2018 Ford Fusion, 17.7. Ours, 16.9. That's over 750 less. Plus a lifetime warranty. Their 2017 Altima, 15.9. Ours, 15.4. Plus a lifetime warranty. Compare and see for yourself. Don't pay more for less, pay less for more. A lot more. Headquarter Nissan. Gear up for fall at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Welcome back to Sports Vision. It's now time for our SEC report brought to you by our good friends at Academy Sports and Outdoors. And let's, let's just start with uh, the team that obviously in my mind is the best team in America. And that's the Alabama Crimson Tide. When you talk about, you know, Coach Saban on Wednesday of last week now, he tested positive. And of course, uh, he was able to line up on Saturday and again, uh, you know, coronavirus free after a, a number of tests that were run and again a special situation with the, with the with how the SEC handles it because everybody else once you get that positive test you're quarantined for at least 10 to 14 days that's right man really but the SEC has some regulations for coaches you know that are a little bit different you know yeah he tested positive for but then he had to uh, submit three negative tests in order for him to be on the field to coach so all that went through but really I don't think it had a whole lot, but it kind of did on that butt whooping that they gave Georgia, 41 to 24. Yeah, yes, indeed. And again, you can tell, I know, you know, Nick Saban is Nick Saban, but for whatever reasons, after this uh, butt kicking that they gave the University of Georgia, you, you can tell that he had a glimpse of what it would be like for him to have the possibility of not coaching because we saw him kind of giddy. And you know what I mean? After, any, after, after a victory, that's not usually normal for, for Nick. But again, when you know what he had been through in the past uh, 48 hours, 72 hours, right. knowing that he could have possibly not been able to go on the sideline with his football team and do what he loves, uh, you can see that he, uh, again, you can have uh, had that extra little uh, giddiness in him. Yeah, I, I think it really affected Nick a little bit more than it did actually the players and the other coaches because really a lot of people don't know this, but really when you're the head coach, you just manage the assistant coaches. And I think nothing changed with these guys. They had a great game plan of what they were going to do. And, and then the thing, I think the most important thing and the reason that Alabama won is because they outcoached Georgia and they made adjustments at halftime. Well, Najee Harris is, uh, again, he's a load. Whoever would have thought that, again, knowing and watching and seeing the, the University of Georgia's defense up to this point, one of the top, if not the top defense in the country, but 150 yards that Najee was able to, to of course, run uh, uh, against the Bulldogs. But, again, a uh, credit to the offensive line because Mac Jones uh, was just spectacular with those three all-world receivers. You know, and Mac Jones was selected as the SEC Offensive Player of the Week, DJ, yet yeah, he threw for 417 yards, four TDs, completed 75% of his passes. Really, he was not bothered doing the uh, after halftime. They were getting after this guy, DJ, in the first half. But really, when you got some receivers like Devont uh, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, John Meacher the third, you got a law firm, DJ, that <laughs> gold gets it, man. And really, they made explosive plays. Georgia sat back on some things. And really, I think really those explosive plays, those three receivers, they were the difference in the game. And folks, don't you try that at home because that doesn't happen normally. <laughs> Dale just mentioned these three receivers. These are all three uh, NFL caliber receivers. And as you've seen in the past few years, every year that we'd have one of the top receivers, these guys are going to follow suit. Smith, as well as Michis, and again, uh, you know, Waddle, those kids are going to have an opportunity to make a lot of money. And uh, what they're doing on this level in the SEC in college football, you know, it doesn't happen. These guys are special. They, are spe they have speed. They obviously uh, have a, a recognition of the passing game. They can read uh, coverages and the fact, they, the fact that they have elite athletic ability. Now, again, 
That combination is special, and that's what ends up making generational wealth for professional football players. Yeah, like you said, DJ, really, if you can't stop these receivers and they're just running free willy-nilly all over the field, you're not going to stop these guys. And really, Mac Jones has gotten really comfortable hitting these guys on deep plays, in plays, quick plays. They get the ball to their playmakers, and even you add Najee Harris to the mix, DJ, they have a potent offense, you know, really. If your offense is playing very well, your defense doesn't have to be that stellar. But they still play good defense. But I think one of the biggest things and the reason that they beat George was that they, I think they just made the right adjustments and they had some explosive plays. Because remember, it was 24-20 going into the third quarter. And again, uh, you know, for whatever reasons, the adjustments that were made at halftime that, you know, we've seen for the third time, <laughs> Alabama has been up or at least down, uh, down to Georgia at halftime. And then Alabama has come back like gangbusters. But, you know, whatever they're doing, Dale, uh, again, uh, you know, my hat's off to Saban and his staff because they are spectacular. Also, I want to take this opportunity. Folks, Mac Jones is not a joke. He is the real deal. His name should be mentioned with, <clears throat> excuse me, the Heisman Trophy candidates or as far as uh, and the best quarterbacks in America. That's right. Because again, when you watch these touchdown passes, these explosive plays, watch the placement of the ball. It falls right into the right into the cup, right into the pocket of these receivers and uh, you know, it's extraordinary. It, it is, DJ. It's big, man. And, you know, on the flip side, you start talking about Georgia and you talk about the Stetson Bennett piece. Really, I think, really, we got exposed with Stetson Bennett, really, him being just the physical piece, being only 5'10", 5'11", getting balls batted down, getting balls tipped, not rolling this young man out. Really, that's just from a coaching perspective. And you got to roll this guy out. But I really think, DJ, just in my heart and in my spirit, you're going to have to put the JT Daniels piece in motion, DJ. I think really for whether his knee is well or not, you're going to have to put this guy in the mix here pretty soon because really when you get down to another game, like an Alabama game, just say the Florida game, this guy's going to have to be the guy that really I think is going to have to be able to pull Georgia out of there offensive limbo I beg to differ I think a little bit <clears throat> excuse me I, I think a little bit differently because of the fact that you know if this guy was all that he was uh, uh, you know it, you know advertised he would be in the game right now because obviously Kirby, Kirby Smart and the Bulldogs know what they have at, at hand now again he came in with damaged goods had uh, surgery on his ACL had some mop-up surgery a little bit later in December and of course he hadn't wasn't hadn't ruled as a mobile guy initially uh, you know, when you, when you think about what's going on, the way Kirby Smart is backing Stetson Bennett and really talking positive about well, what's going on right now with his football team and, of course, under the leadership, even though Stetson has uh, limitations, you know, you have, you, it is what it is. And Dwayne Mathis uh, obviously could not uh, do the job. Stetson Bennett has come in. He has done an admirable job due to his skill set and his, his measurables and his size. Now, this JT Daniel situation, again, I'm looking for, they're off this week. Georgia's off this week, and I'm looking for them to come back and again to have Kentucky. But, you know, if, if, if right now, because he has not, granted, you know, donned the field at all, JT Daniels, maybe he's not as good as we think he is, Dale. Again, that's, that's another thought because realistically, knowing what Kirby is up against, not having him in the game in the past couple of weeks, it, 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 it raises some feathers for me. Well, you know, really, it, it definitely is, a, I mean, a, a question mark, you know. Are you going to uh, play JT Daniels? I mean, really, you went out and got this guy. It probably is the major reason why Jamie Newman left. You went out and got this guy. He's, he's been released by his doctor to play now. And so far as that is concerned, DJ, the big physical arm, the throwing arm, because there's really a lot of things with Stet. Stetson Bennett was basically like, even his, his arm strength was questioned in that game, you know, not being able to get the ball to some players. And I think really you need that big arm if that new offensive coordinator is going to pretty, uh, well, basically throw, put his uh, whole uh, question mark on, on his whole program, you know, for him being a, uh, a, what, a spread out, spread uh, uh, offensive game, you can't you can't deal with him if you don't have a guy that can throw the ball deep down the field. But really, his play calling is going to have to increase, and he's going to have to kind of kind of really just make Stetson Benson a better quarterback by the plays that he calls. All right, well let's go ahead and talk about what Auburn uh, Tigers have to do here, because again, that play calling, uh, you know, uh, quarterback play, all of that comes into into play with me and I'm a little disappointed really because again I was expecting such a great uh, season from Bo Nix however I you know with the changes of the play calling and 
And I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I'm not liking what I'm seeing. And I know if I'm not liking what I'm seeing, I'm, I'm an SEC fan. I, I, I like Auburn. I'm a Gus Malzahn fan. Uh, but that offense that I've been seeing is not the productive offenses when I, that I've seen when Gus Malzahn calls plays. Well, you know, really, it's not, you know, Auburn doesn't look like Auburn under Gus Malzahn at this point, DJ. And I think, really, it starts with the offensive line. I think they just can't protect Bo Nix, and Bo Nix is running for his life in the offense because really they, they haven't protected him. And I think really even getting the ball to Anthony Schwartz, getting the ball to Seth Williams, these guys are big play guys, playing fast. Playing fast is what Gus want to do. Gus, you know, the sugar huddle, getting to the ball, you know, getting the first down, rushing and doing, doing basically, you know, the things that Gus Malzahn seems do. They're not doing that, DJ. And that tells me that Gus is not the one calling the play. Yeah, you went out and got a good friend that, that's a good offensive coordinator and thinks the way that you think, but it's different. Auburn is different when Gus called the play. One thing is for sure is that you can definitely tell that when, you know, we talk about this with the pandemic and all the days that practices in spring that was missed in off season, man, they playing like that. They're, they're one of the few offenses that's right. that, that, that's playing, but it's surprising because we have a veteran quarterback, even though we have a new play caller. But you know what? I'm looking for, uh, of course, uh, Gus to get that tidied up here real soon. Otherwise, they're going to have big problems over at Auburn. They're going to have big problems, DJ, as the season goes in. I mean, really, if they don't develop and start developing, a good offensive line and a good defensive line because really you know Auburn is not the physical team that they usually are and I think really when you have you got to have a good offensive line and you have to have a good defensive line if you're going to contend in the SEC. All right we're going to take a short break. This is Sports Visions. Should planning your travel be more stressful than staying at home? Of course not. Here at Lumpkin Travel our VIP service makes traveling easy and fun. Girls trip! We've helped serve thousands of people and families experience their dream vacation by taking the hassle out of travel. Thank you. We book your flight, reserve your hotel, and make sure you have a stress-free vacation so you can enjoy every moment of it. We even help you choose different activities that you're guaranteed to enjoy. And the best part is, we find you the best price at no extra charge for you. Actually, 95% of customers save money and time by booking with Lumpkin Travel. So start thinking about your dream vacation. Wherever you want to go, whatever you want to do, we'll make it happen for you. As easy as one, two, three. Call today or log on and set up your vacation of a lifetime with Lumpkin Travel, your travel agent for life. E&S Men's Clothing Warehouse has been your most trusted name in men's fashion for more than 50 years. We've offered the area's best selection of top quality name brand suits, accessories, and casual wear at the most competitive prices around. Customer service is our top priority. We're the professionals generations have trusted for the best quality and absolutely the best deals. We are E&S Men's Clothing Warehouse. We are simply the best. Come into Chester's Barbecue for our world-famous mouth-watering ribs, smoked fresh on our grill daily, or try one of our barbecue pork plates with fresh sides. Chester's has delicious sandwich combos to choose from that are sure to please. We also serve tempting home-cooked favorites, and don't forget to take home your own bottle of great sauce. Chester's Barbecue, serving the best food at the best price, with three locations to serve you. Hey, my name is George, and I love the Chick-fil-A grilled nuggets. It's like me grilling at home. It tastes very similar to that, except the seasoning. I probably can't season it as well as uh, Chick-fil-A does. The chicken's super tender, and honestly, the best nuggets I've ever tasted. My name is Meredith, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese is the oven-toasted cheesy top layer. If home had a flavor, it would be Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese. I'm passionate about it. <laughs> And welcome back to Sports Visions, Dale. Prior to uh, this uh, last break, you end up uh, talking about Auburn and the sugar huddle. I know that went over my head, and I know <laughs> that it went over their head as well. Tell people out there what is a sugar huddle. A sugar huddle is this. You know, when Auburn makes a first down and the referee puts the ball back down, DJ, they set up their huddle like one yard behind the football, and they quickly get to the, ball, the line of scrimmage. That's what a sugar huddle is. Auburn wants to play fast. They don't want to go back into the traditional huddle four and five yards off the line of scrimmage and get a play call. 
They want to call their play from the line of scrimmage quickly as possible. All right, put that in your notes, sugar huddle. Okay. Now the Atlanta Falcons got their first victory in under Raheem Morris, and I'm excited for the Falcons as well as the city of Atlanta because they deserve a winner. They don't deserve to be 0-5. And, and based on what I've seen, Dale, you know, and the, with the experience of Raheem, uh, you know, these players are playing, and they're playing on both sides of the ball. They're playing with some intensity. They're playing with some intensity, and they seem to, to enjoy Raheem Morris, him being the new head coach, and really just trying to turn over a new leaf to get a new uh, a new life, so to speak, but really, they played fast on defense, they played very efficient on offense, they didn't have major turnovers, Julio Jones was back, you know, and really, the Falcons have an explosive offense, but really, I was really impressed with the way they got after people on defense. Todd Gurley had a spectacular day, I tell you, he was hitting up in there, looks like he's starting to get back into rare form, not Close to 100%, but he looked like he's 80, 85-ish. I mean, really, 85% Todd Gurley is great, man. But really, one of the good things that Todd Gurley brings to the Atlanta Falcons offense is possessions. You know, it's time off the clock. You don't have to get into a, a shooting match with most of the teams, you know, throwing the ball around because Matt Ryan's going to have great stats. Matt Ryan's going to throw the ball 30-plus times. But really, just for slowing the game down, being a good defense for the Atlanta Falcons by being at, being able to stay on the field a long time, but their defense has done a great job of preventing a lot of scores, these explosive plays like they did against the Vikings. I mean, really, they got after the Minnesota Vikings. You made mention of Julio Jones coming back, and obviously anytime Julio is healthy, uh, he's going to make spectacular plays, and he did that indeed. Of course, the 40-yard touchdown that he caught uh, on a scramble by Matt Ryan, again, and the stiff arm man, uh, obviously, he's a beast. Uh, this is a guy that's big, strong, fast, and obviously uh, knows how to run the route tree. And you know, really, when, like you said, DJ, he's a student of the game. He runs a great route tree, DJ, but one of the biggest things about Julio Jones is that, is that he's just been nicked up so much and hurt so much and really when he's rested and he can come back and play he always have an impactful game well I love the arsenal of receivers that the uh, Falcons have when you talk about Ridley and then there's uh, you know there's even a third guy there that I can't think of right now but uh, Gage. these guys yeah, yeah Gage Gage uh, it's uh, it's incredible and when Matt Ryan as we always say when you keep him clean and upright and now with the addition of Gurley of course continuing to move the clock and there's some great backup running backs behind Gurley that come in and, and do an adequate job uh, it'll be eager to see uh, I'm eager to see how uh, the next uh, 10 weeks go again 10 weeks 10 games that's a lot of football left to play and for you folks who have gotten off the bandwagon I'm gonna give you an opportunity to get back on because you know what 10 games that's that's over half of the season that's a lot of games DJ and the Falcons have an opportunity to turn this whole season around especially with their schedule that they have you know they, they're playing the Lions they'll be able to play they play the Panthers again then they have the Broncos coming in they can actually easily win these three games, DJ, just like those five games that uh, half of them they shouldn't have lost. So really, I think the Falcons are going to turn this thing all the way around. I think Raheem uh, Mars is going to do a great job and be named the coach at the end of the year. But like you said, DJ, 10 games, that's a lot of football to be played. And the Detroit Lions are up next, and they're not doing great. But again, like you mentioned before, the schedule that they have is very conducive to them turning this thing around. And if they win another seven, eight, nine games out of these remaining 10, hey, guess what? The Falcons will be right back uh, where they need to be. And then keep in mind that, you know, it's great – as we were talking about uh, what uh, New Orleans as well as Tampa Bay and, uh, of course, even uh, the uh, Carolina Panthers when we were talking in, during the offseason several weeks ago about the great quarterback acquisitions and the, and the potential, you know, they're playing okay. You know, they're not playing great. They're not gangbusters. So that gives you uh, a feeling that the Falcons could very well make a move. They can make a move, DJ. And like you said, the, the NFC South is one of the toughest divisions in NFL football. But I think really, you know, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay is playing good. The Saints are playing playing good you know the Panthers are playing good but I think really the Falcons really can start up and do, start doing some things they got some people that were injured but they're back but really the Falcons can win all the rest of their games there. the next 10 games DJ they've still got they got players that they can still win these games with some of the other intriguing stories out there that uh, you know it just blows my mind the way the Cowboys have been playing man again here's the situation again you say what's wrong with the Cowboys you know and, and, and you don't, you can talk about you know, of course, Dak going down, and, and I, I know that that's, uh, that's, that's, that's serious when you, lead, you lose your leader and your quarterback. But, you know, they paid all of these players, these defensive players. They played, uh, you know, of course, uh, uh, you know, Zeke. They pay, I mean, Dale, they have done everything. Jerry Jones has done everything but pay Dak. And what you're seeing is they have the finest facilities. They have the finest <laughs> stadium. Everything they want. And, again, I heard a, a term that was used is that these guys are soft. 
Oh man, you don't. You know, when you call a team soft, DJ, that's the worst thing that you could possibly call it. A Dallas Cowboy team. I've been very just intrigued also about the Dallas Cowboys because really Jerry Jones pays these guys very well. But you know what? I think he needs to fire himself and his son as general <laughs> manager because they're not developing any talent, DJ. They're just paying paying players for what they do, and some of them are really not as good as that. The money uh, tends to be, but I think at the same time, man, they got to get a little bit better. And you, I, I can't even talk about uh, Mike McCarthy as a head coach because really, I don't think these guys are bought in anyway, and really they have no chemistry. That Prescott is injured and he's out for the year. So really, uh, the Andy Dalton piece, that doesn't seem to work, you know, and then you got, you know, I just think uh, they got a lot of problems in Dallas, DJ. Well, one thing that they have on their side is time. And again, we talked about the 10 weeks for the Falcons to turn this thing around. You know what? The good thing about it, the Dallas Cowboys have 10 weeks as well. When you talk about, of course, uh, what's going on up with the New England Patriots, Cam Newton is back, of course, after sitting out with his uh, COVID-19 uh, positive test. But you can tell that he has been away from the practice field. Now, again, we mentioned earlier that Nick Saban tested positive on a Wednesday. and He was back coaching on a Saturday. Well, it's a lot different in the pros when you get tested for a positive in, in the NFL. You know, at least 10 days that you have to go into protocol or have to go into quarantine. That's right. And, you know, quarantine means you have to you can't practice with the team. You can't go to the facility. So can you imagine here in the middle or uh, start of the season, your quarterback, your starting quarterback who came out the gate playing well, all of a sudden he goes on the shelf for 10, 12, 14 days. And he just, when he gets the chance to come back, he's not the same quarterback. He's not gonna be the same quarterback, DJ. Like you say, he's almost been out three weeks, man. And you know, really for us not being able to be in the facilities, being able to work out, being around the team, all these things are gonna take, uh, take place really when he starts, when he comes back. I think he'll do a whole lot better this week, DJ, and I think he's gonna get a whole lot better because one of the biggest things about when you start off good and then you're out for three weeks, I mean, really, I don't know what worse. You know, if, I think you might wanna be injured. You can cut back before three, uh, three weeks, but really, if you get the coronavirus, you test positive for coronavirus, you're going to be out almost three weeks, DJ. Well, the good thing about it is that I, I like what uh, when, I, when I hear that, uh, hear uh, 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 when I hear him on the interviews and Cam Newton, that is, and he is so mature when, with, with, with how he's handling it. He's saying, obviously, he's taking the blame. He's saying all the right things. And, you know, I, I hadn't heard that version of Cam before. And maybe that's, uh, you know, another reason why uh, Belichick, they bought into to Cam because they realized that his back's against the wall. A lot of people who had an opportunity to get him did not take him. And uh, he has uh, pledged himself to make this team uh, the best that they can be. And, you know, and I see down the line, DJ, they're going to extend this guy's contract, too, and give him a little bit more money because really they see the importance of a Cam Newton. And I think really for him, his maturity, him being humble, him being in, a, in an environment where he enjoys being around these players, Bill Belichick and his program and the New England Patriots, what other uh, NFL program would you rather, not, rather be around? than the New England Patriots. And I think really he'll get better as time goes on. All right, we'll take a short break. This is Sports Visions. Welcome to Peaceful River Residential Services, where we care for your family like our family. Peaceful River is dedicated to creating an environment where we constantly exceed the expectations of our individuals. We strive to set the industry standard and be the provider of choice that meets the lifelong needs of your family. We are the caring provider whose respect for the individual's privacy and protecting their confidentiality is our top priority. We are the provider whose most valuable asset is you, our family. Call Peaceful Rivers today at 762-821-1476. Remember, at Peaceful River, we provide peace for your peace of mind. For the best in local, regional, and national sports news, be sure to tune to the Sports Visions Radio Show every Monday and Thursday from 4 to 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Over the past 16 years, DJ Jones and Dale Williams have celebrated and uplifted our local high school coaches and student athletes. 
So get a behind-the-scenes look from your hometown sports guys. DJ Jones and Dale Williams on WRCG 92.1. And welcome back to Sports Visions. We are into the World Series now. Unfortunately, our Atlanta Braves, Dale, was so close, but no cigar. No, I'm telling you, man, and really congratulations to the Braves anyway, man, because they exceeded everybody's ex- expectations this year. One of the youngest teams in baseball, you know, when the uh, season started, that Mike uh, Scirocco, towards ACL, and everybody was saying the Braves have no pitcher. Well, they really delivered. Probably the best thing they did was deliver with the pitchers. I think really the Max Free piece was big. The Ian Anderson piece was big. Bryce Wilson. These young guns, we're talking about kids that are under 25 years old, came in, did a great job. The uh, Marcelo Zuno piece was big for the Atlanta Braves. They really did a great job through the whole season. Now, again, it gets down, we get down to the playoffs in game seven, DJ, and we just don't get any timely hitting. And that's one of the things you got to have in Major League Baseball is timely hitting. But well, hats off to the Braves. Absolutely. Congratulations to uh, the manager, Brian Snicker, and his Atlanta Braves. And we expect them to be right back here uh, in the playoffs, of course, in the uh, NLDS as well as the NLCS next season. Okay. Now, congratulations goes out to the Los Angeles Dodgers, who are uh, who was picked to be uh, you know one of the best teams in the league and, of course, uh, one of the highest priced payrolls <laughs> in the right. league, but they're going up against the uh, Tampa Bay Rays, who are, is the least paid uh, team in the league. And so we got a situation here. This is a business opportunity <laughs> for these owners to see. You got uh, the team that, with all, that paid the money, that get, went to the bank and got the money and paid everybody. And then you got another team that kept every dime. And of course, they're keeping the, the key <laughs> to the safe under the rug. And you know what? Uh, so far, so good. The Dodgers jump out to a game one win uh, on Tuesday. And, of course, at the taping of this show, we, uh, I expect them to be up you know, several games uh, by the time we air this show. I mean, really, DJ, you said a mouthful. You know, for us, you know, for us the Tampa Bay Rays are concerned and the Dodgers, both of them were the number one seeds in their, in their league. So, basically, you know, having the Dodgers having the winningest record in Major League Baseball this year with 47 and 13. And I think really Tampa Bay ran away with the American League. But at the same time, DJ, you know, as far as the players are concerned, I just think the Los Angeles Dodgers have a lot more experience in, in, in World Series play and these divisional championship play. Because one good thing that the Dodgers do, they go long in the count. And what I mean by that is that, you know, they'll, play, they'll work you to a 3-2 count. They are very, they're going to foul balls off. They're going to have uh, one batter is going to get 10 pitches. He's going to see pitches. But really, the play of Cody Bellinger and Mookie Betts, those two guys are long and have just timely hitting. Those are the things that win you championships. And I think really the Dodgers seem to have that, that caliber of uh, a play that's going on. I made mention of uh, the Dodgers uh, ownership uh, bagging up the Brinks truck and paying the players. Clayton Kershaw, one of the great pitchers of all all time. He'd definitely be first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, He had some problems against the Braves in that series uh, with his back, but he's back now. And again, he got the first win uh, in game one on Tuesday. And now Mookie Betts, uh, as you (laughs) mentioned, uh, Dale, you know what? This guy, they paid him, uh, you know, gave him a 12 year deal. He's making 20 million per $250 million that they've committed uh, to this young man. But one thing that I love about when you do commit that kind of money is that you have a 5-2 player, a player that's going to play offense and that's defense. Right. If that's not working, he's working, uh, he's doing his, his job on defense. And I really like that because, again, uh, you know, he's just extraordinary. Hit a home run in, uh, in game one as well. That's right. I mean, really, he shows all his 5-2s, DJ, when he plays. I mean, stealing bases, you know, making, making catches in the outfield. I mean, golden glove. Throws got a great throwing arm. Along with Cody Bellinger, they just have big time players that play defense. Really, and a lot of things, you know, we always use this term in football that defense wins championship. But it's the same way in baseball because I tell you, I mean, you can take away a couple of those home runs and big plays uh, that they made against the Braves, and the Braves could be easily in that same position. But they have a very good all around team with a lot of experience. And Dave Roberts, their manager, he does a great job coaching the L.A. Dodgers. Before we uh, end this segment, I want to take <clears> a few <throat> minutes to talk about the, 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 the protocol as far as how they played the game. Playing in Arlington in a new, brand new uh, stadium and up next with a, uh, a, a, a what kind of roof? A, a ex- extractable, retractable, retractable roof. roof. Yeah. Uh, new stadium and then, of course, you see the Rays played out in, on the West Coast. They come, came in. You know, basically the Dodgers have been there uh, the whole, all three series. That's right. 
Is that an advantage? Uh, it might be an advantage, DJ, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, being on a neutral site kind of, I think, really mellows things out and really, but I think really the Tampa Bay Rays, you know, going back and forth, if you went, you know, you had to be in Florida, then you got to go to California, you know, that really would uh, coronavirus proof. And I think really they were very careful. Major League Baseball was very careful about determining where this game would be. But at the same time, that's the neutral site, Arlington, Texas, Globe Life Stadium. I mean, a beautiful stadium. And then they're allowing a limited number of people to the games, which brings a little bit of excitement. I think most of them are L.A. Dodger people, DJ, but at the same time, they've been in that Arlington Stadium uh, two series now, and you know, it's almost like a little home to them, but at the same time, I think the Tampa Bay Rays are, are really an admirable team to go up against the Dodgers, but it's going to be very interesting. I think it's going to go seven games, though. All right. One thing about it is we have an NBA champion that was crowned just a couple of weeks ago, and of course now, here in a couple of days, we'll have a World Series champion, and then of course the college season and professional uh, season as far as football is concerned. Dale, I tell you what, we have a smorgasbord <laughs> of sports. This is a buffet. This is a buffet, DJ, and really, we usually get this in October, but this year we've had We've had it all the way from all the way from July all the way into it probably is going to go into December. We'll be able to see and talk about a whole lot of sports for the rest of the year. All right. Don't go away. We'll be right back. It started with a few smaller bills. $50 here. $80. $100. I had good health insurance. Why isn't this covered? Well, then they started getting bigger. $800. $1,800. I saved for this. But not that much. I'm glad I had Aflac. They gave me money when I needed it most. That's why Aflac is here, to help with the expenses health insurance doesn't cover. I love that Aflac duck. Aflac. Get to know us at Aflac.com. Japan, they have something called Kobe beef. That's how we do it at Luke's Pub. 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 Y'all come out and see us. Headquarter Nissan has the same used cars as our competitors for much less. And with a lifetime warranty. Their 2018 Ford Fusion, 17.7. Ours, 16.9. That's over 750 less. Plus a lifetime warranty. Their 2017 Altima, 15.9. Ours, 15.4. Plus a lifetime warranty. Compare and see for yourself. Don't pay more for less, pay less for more. A lot more. Headquarter Nissan. And welcome back to the final segment of today's Sports Visions TV show deal. Man, we've had an action-packed show, a lot of going on, man, and still right here, slap dead in the middle of this World Series. I'm thinking that the Dodgers have, uh, have what it takes. They paid the money. They got the <laughs> best players. But, boy, if, it's, if, if the fact that, that the Tampa Bay Rays come up and, of course, knock off uh, a team that's uh, well-paid, so talented. You know what? That's going to change the game as far as how the major league owners and all those analytic folks look <laughs> at how they sign. It might change the analytic folks, <laughs> but really, as far as the money is concerned, I think really most of these guys that have played so well and so young for the Tampa Bay Rays, DJ, they're going to be requesting a little bit more money. And I think really, if they win the World Series, I think ownership will bless these guys with whatever they're worth. But I think really the L.A. Dodgers, they got some of the best players in the whole uh, Major League Baseball in that sense. And I think really paying Mookie Best that big money, paying Cody Bellinger this money, uh, Clayton Kershaw major money. And like you said, they're the number, they have the highest payroll in Major League Baseball. And of course, don't forget, we want to make sure that we thank each and every one of you for watching out there on CTV Beam. We appreciate you, of course. And again, the radio listeners on our Sports Visions radio show every Monday and Thursday from 4 to 6 o'clock on WRCG 92.1 and also on Facebook Live. We are having a wonderful time with everybody. We're doing a great job with the DJ. And for <clears> you all that don't have the Sports Vision radio app, this is all you gotta do. All you smartphone users, all you have to do is go to your Play Store, click on Sports Vision's radio, and bam, you have your free app. All you gotta do is just go to your app store and type in Sports Vision radio and it'll come up. Guaranteed, free, and you'll have that app. Well, that's going to do it for all the sports visions we have for you today. For Dale Williams, I'm DJ Jones reminding you to keep your eye on the ball.